Welcome back. It's me, it's me, it's Mr. Sully. So I am back with you today. We're going to be talking about inverses. All right, inverses of exponential expressions. Before you do that, remember inverse is kind of like the opposite. So if you want to think of it that way, the inverse of cool would be this guy, Mr. Brust. I don't know. All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's get to it. So here we have an exponential function. Let's just write some of these um, points out so we know what they are. Um, it's clear we have them right here, but so this is negative 1, 0.5, or 1 half, right? Then this point here is 0, 1. The next one is 1, 2, 2, and 4, 3, and 8. All right, so that is our exponential function with base, base 2. Remember, that's key here. All right, so now let's talk about the logarithm with a base of 2. Now, we could go in here and, and calculate these without a calculator, for sure. I'm just going to save us some time here. Let's take a look here. So, 1, I see uh, 1, 0. That's a good one. And 2, 1. So, I'm going to write those down. Um, 1, 0, and 2, 1. Let's see if we can find some other good good numbers here. Uh, 4, 2, right? What, what, what do I mean by good numbers? I'm just thinking of um, easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy no decimal, no hassle. Um, these are all decimals. Oh, there's an 8, 3 is a good one. All right. 8, 3. All right. So I'm missing one. Uh, let's hopefully, let's, let's see if we can get a good pattern here. 3, 8, 8, 3, mm, 2, 4, 4, 2, 1, 2, 2. Eh, ah, they're just backwards, right? So this is going to be 0.5 or 1 half and negative 1. So now we can kind of plot these, right? So I have 1 half and negative 1. I have 1 and 0. I have 2 and 1. I have 4 and 2. And I have 8 all the way down here and 3. And if I'm really, really good, I can draw this logarithmic graph. Now, of course, I'm not really, really good at it, but you get the point. These two things are inverses, all right? So let's let's talk about what that means for a second. So the big thing is logarithmic functions are inverses of, of exponential functions and vice versa. Exponential functions are inverses of logarithmic functions. So what's that mean? Well, the first thing it means is that the graphs are a reflection in the function h of a x equals x, just y equals x all right <clears throat> what's it mean to be a reflection let's take a look here so if i were to draw that line y equals x right that's start at zero slope of one that's up here whoa that's really bad but what does it mean it's a reflection so this point reflects over to here this point three eight reflects to here eight three there's an a, a, a similar point all over that that also means here, we know that this exponential has this uh, asymptote here of the x-axis. So what is that going to mean here? There's going to be an asymptote here on the y-axis. All right, so we have a reflection. We're going to talk more about graphs later, but I just want you to understand that because they're inverses, that's one of the things it means there. It's going to be a reflection in the line y equals x. All right, that's great. What else, cool Mr. Sullivan? Oh, let's see here. The domain of the exponential function is the range of the logarithmic function. So the domain of the exponential, so the x's, are the y's of the logarithmic function. No way. That can't be true. Let's see. Here's my x's. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So my x's are my y's and my logarithmic. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2. No way! It's true incredible all right so we got that going that's awesome likewise the range of my exponential is my domain of my logs half half one one two two four four eight eight no way super cool i know you must be pumped about that let's make sure you write that and understand that down so the domain of the exponential is the range of the logarithmic and vice versa the y's the the range of the exponential is the whoop this should say domain the domain of the logarithmic or the x values of the log all right they are inverses 
What else is true about inverses? The oper operations undo each other. So much like multiplying by 2, I can undo it by dividing by 2. Logs can undo exponents. Hmm, interesting. Let's talk more about that later. And very important, we have this situation where if I place the composition of functions, if I place g of x into f of x, it's going to be the same as if I place f of x into g of x. And when I get it, both sides are going to equal just x. All right, we'll talk more about these. Okay, we'll talk more about these. Don't worry too much. Let's see what we got. All right, so first thing here, it says, describe this function as exponential or logarithmic, and then find points for its inverse. All right, so I want to go back to my table real quick, because I have two tables here. Let's talk about exponential functions. You'll notice that the x values go up additively, right? They add one. Even if I skip some, it's obvious that these are going and changing by adding. Whereas my y's, when I have an exponential, my y's are going up multiplicatively. All right. Okay, now, that means the inverse is true over here. My x's are going up multiplicatively for logarithmic, and my y's are going up additively. So, let's take a look. All right. First thing we need to know is that exponential logarithmic, well, my x's are going up additively. They're adding one each time, and my y's are multiplying by three every time. So that means this is exponential. So I know it's exponential, and I know it's exponential because the y values are going up multiplicatively. Now let's find an inverse of this function. Very easy. I'm going to take my domain and make it my range. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to make my range my domain, 1 third, 1, 3, 9, 27, because I know that when I have inverses, the x values become the y values, and the y values become the x values. Easy peasy. All right. I want you to try number two all on your own here, so just pause it and try it all on your own. All right, so first, I said it was logarithmic. I know that these don't go up additively all the way, but the pattern is true. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 4. I know it looks like I'm skipping, but I'm I'm really am skipping one, right? right? I'm skipping a value of 3. Doesn't mean it changes anything. It's still, these are going up additively, and my x values are going up multiplicatively. And when my x values go up multiplicatively, I have a logarithmic function. All right. Then I took my range, made it my, dom uh, my, I took my range, made it my domain of my exponential inverse. I took my domain and it was the range of my exponential inverse of that function all right so the the function was logarithmic it's inverse exponential all right so inverses undo each other Ooh. all right here we go this is what i'm talking about this is kind of like a property right like you know that uh two times x if i divide by two i'm left with just x okay the same thing is true for inverses, but we have to be very careful here because I'm doing base 2 here. So that means if I want to undo this, I have to take the log of that, but it has to be the exact same base. So log base 2 of 2 of x is going to cancel everything out and give me just what's here in my exponent, x. All right, over here, if I want to do this, all right, I have a log. So the inverse of doing the log is going to be an exponent. So I have to treat this like an exponent. So I'm going to do 2, whoa, base 2, because it's base 2. If this was base 12, it'd be 12, to the log of 2 to the x. When I have this situation, these undo each other because the bases are the same. And what's left? The exponent. That is something you, you need to learn. All right, so are the following inverses of each other? If I put one into the other, does it equal x? I think you see that. So let's do f of g of x. So I'm going to put g of x in here. So that means 2 to the x, but that now is g of x. So I'm putting all of this into it. So 2 to the log 2 of x, 
And we just showed you that when that's true, all of this cancels and I'm left with what's left here, which is just X. Great, let's try putting this one into that one. So I have log two of, what am I putting in? Two to the X. And we learned that these undo each other because the bases are the same and what's left, this exponent. So f of g of x gives me x, g of f of x gives me x, and it is x. That means, yes, they are truly inverses. Okay, let's try another one. Here we go. Find the inverse of each function. All right, so I want to actually find this inverse. So here we go. I'm going to rewrite this as y. y equals 3 log 5, base 5 to the x. So I want to get um, the inverse. That means I, my y value should be my x value, and it means my x value should be my y value. All right, and I want to solve for y here. So first thing I have is 3 times that, so i got to divide by 3. So I'm going to divide this by 3. So now I'm going to have this is x over 3. Could I have written this as 1 third times x? Yeah, absolutely. Just de depends what you like. Is there one better than the other? Not in my mind. All right, now I have to ask myself, I need to get y by itself. How do I get y by itself? Well, I just learned that this base of 5, because I have a log, I can make this an exponent. If I make this side an exponent, I have to make this side an exponent because I have to do the same thing to both sides. Well, now all of this cancels and I get y. And then what's the left on this side? 5 to the x over 3 equals y. Or we could write that as the inverse of f of x. Okay? 5 to the x over 3. Hold on. Now, check this out. Very common thing uh, for me. I don't know why. This is actually f prime of x. That's bad. That's bad. This is this is f inverse of x. So this is the inverse of f. That's how it should be written. I'm really sorry. I have a tendency to do that. I don't know why. I don't know why. So if you ever see me write that um, right now in this section, it should have the negative one. If I don't, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. All right. So let's keep going now. Let's try this one. So I have y equals 10 to the x over 6. First thing I want to do when I find the inverse is switch the x and the y. So now I have my x over here. This is 10 to the y over 6. All right. The inverse operation of exponents is taking the log. I need to take the same base of this. So that's log base 10. And remember, log base 10, I don't write the, the base, right? You can. Um, I've seen it. I've seen AP do it. Uh, just understand, I don't do it because it's the common log. All right. So now we have a couple of interesting things. This right here is going to cancel out, right? And now I have log of x equals y over 6. The opposite of dividing by 6, of course, is multiplying. So I have 6 times log of x equals y, which is the inverse to the negative one of x perfect much better i'm so sorry about that mistake if you find that i do that in somewhere else i'm really sorry i'll try to fix them all all right let's see what's next i want you to pause the video and try these two questions on your own all right hopefully you tried those on your own so I'm going to plug g of x into f first. I'm going to take that, plug it in over here. I have 5 to the 4 times 4 log 5 of x. That's 16 log 5 of x. I'm going to notice that I can uh, raise that 16 back up there using that product property, right? So now I have log 5 of x to the 16th. Then I can cancel that. Only then can I cancel this because now I have the same base. And our property tells that those are uh, will cancel out. And then I get x to the 16th. When I plug in f of x into g of x, I have 4 times the log base 5 of 5 to the 4x. All of that cancels out, which gives me 4 times 4x, which is 16x, which is just not the same. So they're not inverses. All right. Finding the inverse. Switch my x and my y. I'm going to raise it to the power of 2 because I have the base of 2. So I raise each side to the power of 2. 
And then I had 2 to the x over 10 is y equals r inverse. I also wrote it as 2 to the 1 tenth x. Either is, either is fine. There's a, really no preference that I'm aware of. Um, they're the same thing. I probably write this more than that. But, uh, you know, whatever floats your boat. And that's it. Best of luck. Make sure you ask lots of questions. Raise those hands. Get in your teacher's ear. Uh, get help as any way you can. You can do this. You can totally learn this. This is all you. You got this. See you next time. Sully out.